My name is David Stanik. I'm a head of the laboratory of RNA biology at the Institute of Molecular Genetics in Prague, the Czech Republic. And our research is oriented on RNA splicing and diseases connected to RNA splicing. And one of these diseases is so-called retinitis pigmentosa. Retinitis pigmentosa is a hereditary disease which affects one out of 4,000 individuals. And during the disease, the retina cells are dying, people are losing the night vision, they lose the peripheral vision, going to so-called the tunnel vision, and they eventually they can be totally blind. Most mutated genes that cause this disease are somehow connected with the function of photoreceptor cells or developmental of retina. But surprisingly, five genes which are mutated and causing retinitis pigmentosa were connected to splicing, primary splicing, and formation of splicing machinery. And all these genes are part of the core spliceosomal particles called small nuclear ribonucleoprotein particles, or SNRPs. And five genes connected to the disease were HPRP8, HPRP6, HPRP31, HPRP3, and human BER2. And mutation in all these particles were studied and all causes problems in assembly of the core spasmal particle SNRPs. However, the initial research on E suggested that mutations in BER2 doesn't affect SNRP assembly. And that's why we decided to study BER2 mutations in human cells. And that was the task for my postdoc, Suska Cvačkova. Hello, I'm Zuzana Cvačková, I'm postdoc in this lab. We studied two mutations of BIR2. Uh, they both result in amino acid alteration and uh, situated in N-terminal helicase domain of BIR2 that plays an important role in RNA duplex unwinding. BIR2 is a large protein of 200 kilodaltons and it would be quite difficult to, to prepare its mutants by traditional side-directed mutagenesis. We overcame this problem uh, and employed BIR2 that is expressed from bacterial artificial chromosome uh, and that is uh, tagged with GFP. We prepared both mutants by back recombinating technique. Um, using of back provides additional advantages. It preserves endogenous promoter and other regulatory sequences, exon intron structure, um, and our protein is expressed at a near physiological level. We were also able to knock down specifically endogenous BIR2 using a cRNA designed against the sequence close to the stop codon where GFP tag is attached. Wild type and both mutants were stably expressed in HeLa cells. Uh, they both are, uh, they both reveal a similar uh, speckled distribution pattern uh, and they both co-localized with SRSF2, uh, which is a marker of nuclear speckles. As David told, uh, retinitis pigmentosa linked mutations of splicing factor compromise trisnerve assembly. Uh, we tested incorporation of BR2 mutants into SNRPs by immunoprecipitation using anti-G antibody. And we observed that both mutants were properly incorporated in SNRPs, as you can see, for example, on this RNA gel. To test the role of BR2 mutants on splicing, we studied alternative splicing of some endogenous genes and gene reporters based on genes that are abundantly expressed in the retina. And there was no difference between wild type and mutants. But then we observed that BIR2 mutants increase uh, efficiency of constitutive splicing. So we decided to have a look on how precisely do BIR2 mutants their job. We employed beta-globin-based reporters containing cryptic splicite. This cryptic splicite is much more used when the normal splicite is mutated. We studied splicing of beta-globin reporters after knockdown of endogenous BRR2. 
In HeLa cells, this resulted in less efficient splicing of wild-type beta-globin reporter and enhanced splicing of mutated beta-globin reporter. Expression of either BIR2 mutant did not reduce splicing efficiency of mutated beta-globin reporter. Splicing efficiency was similar as in BIR2 depleted cells. Tinnitus pigmentosa linked mutations weaken proofreading function of BIR2. And this could be a serious problem for metabolically highly active cells such as photoreceptors. I would like to thank you for your attention. The whole story was recently published in the Journal of Human Mutation. And if you're interested, you can read it there. And I wish you a good reading. Thank you.